Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Today, I'm bringing in three top strategies to help you to increase your online sales. Let's go. Hey, friend. All right. Fingers crossed. Every time I start this, the leaf blower starts. Oh my gosh. All right. Hopefully you can hear me loud and clear, uh, but I got some good stuff that I want to share it with you today. So if the leaf blower is noises in the background, know that this is just real life. And we're just going to dive into it because today's podcast episode, I'm actually going to be sharing with you three strategies to help you to increase your sales in online world. Why? Because I want you making money, more money. Why? The more money you make, the me that means you're serving more and more people and the world needs you to show up every single day for them. So let's dive into it. I'm going to start off by telling you something that happened. And I think that'll make sense and help you to remember these strategies as you dive into your business this week. Okay. So we're currently uh, in Utah, visiting friends and family. We head, we head back to Puerto Rico towards the end of August. And in uh, Utah, we have a house and we actually get to stay here uh, for a couple months over the summer. It's It's been such a blessing to be able to do that. We rent out nine months out of the year uh, to this amazing, beautiful couple. And then they actually go, they're newlyweds. So they go back and live with their parents while we're here. Now in the backyard, I have a peach tree and it like I baby this peach tree, like no one's business. When we get here in Utah, like that's the first place I go is I go and like, look at the peach tree to see how it's doing. We actually trans, uh, we did a transplant from another house to get it here. Cause I love this thing so much. Uh, and the other day, um, I was looking at it and I noticed that one of the branches was broken. And it wasn't like this little tiny branch. It was a good size branch. And so, of course, I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I go running out uh, into the backyard to see what is going on with this peach tree. And I'm noticing that there are so many peaches on this specific branch that it couldn't hold it anymore. And it cracked. And, of course, I'm like, dang it, dang it. I forgot to prune the peach tree. Now, if you know anything about fruit trees, uh, fruit trees grow a lot of fruit on them and you have to go out and you have to pull off the the fruit or because if you don't, then they're going to grow kind of not as good. They're smaller because they're fighting for competition on that same branch. And if you go through and you uh, like clear them out, I think it's like every four, maybe six inches you have a fruit. Uh, if you do that by the end of the season, your fruit is ginormous it's juicier, it's sweeter because it's its own branch and it like it's got its space and it can grow and it's not fighting for the nutrients in the tree. And so I yelled to my family, I'm like, get out here. We've got to prune the tree fast, fast, fast. So the whole family's out there. We're pruning the tree to save the precious other branches uh, from cracking. So as the family and I were out there trying to rescue this tree from all of the weight of the little tiny peaches on there, like, like pulling them off as fast as we possibly can, all of the business analogies flooded my head. And this is what I want to share with you today. Okay. So as we start growing, okay, imagine yourself, you're the peach tree right now. And you are like, oh, I want to start a business around this idea. And then a week later, you're like, oh, I want to start a business around this idea. And before you know it, you have this beautiful branch, but it's got 50 different little tiny peaches all over it. And it starts to feel heavy. In fact, it may feel so heavy that you might start feeling like you're cracking, right? If your branch is too heavy, you've got too many ideas, too many businesses, too many products, too many things, I promise you, you will either crack or you're not, you're just going to get little tiny little results from every single business or every single idea that you don't get to have like one big, beautiful peach at the end of the season. You just got these rock hard, gross, bitter peaches. Okay. So today, number one, the number one thing that I want you, the, the best strategy out there that I have learned over and over and over again is prune your tree. 
I want you to go into your business analytics, whether you're running it off Instagram, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Shopify, whether it's click funnels. And I want you to look at the analytics, which business is actually creating income for you. Which business can you put on hold and not do? And which businesses can you completely shut down? Cause you know, the back of your mind, it's just not going to do anything, or you're not going to be able to give it the time to be able to make it grow. I was talking to one of my students the other day and she was feeling a little bit spread thin. I said, show me the back, show me, show me your analytics. So she showed me her analytics and there was one category that was producing 90% of her cells. And I said, huh? You got 90% in this specific category. Why are you working on all this other stuff? All the other 10%. And she had this big aha moment of, oh my gosh, I am completely wasting my time because she was trying to grow all these other things up and neglecting the 90%. And I'm like, if you put more energy and effort into what is actually working, you are going to explode and get the sweetest fruit out there. My good friend, Alex Hermosi told me, I, I was listening to him speak one time and he was basically yelling at all entrepreneurs and it has stuck with me for a long time. He said, when entrepreneurs start something and it starts working, what do entrepreneurs do? They start something else. He's like, stop starting something else. Dive in deeper to the thing that is working. That has always struck with me and I want it to stick with you too. Look at those analytics. Let those numbers guide you. Get into other accounts, put them on pause or hold off until you are ready. Okay. The second thing to help you to uh, increase your sales is we got to clean up and organize your stations, whether it's your computer. When's the last time you looked at your desktop? Do you have 10,000 things on your desktop? Yeah. You've been screenshotting. You've been recording videos. Clean your computer up. There's a reason why we have Google Docs. Google Docs is the greatest invention ever. You, your team can all add to a folder and get it off your computer. Imagine if your computer crashes and it's all on your desktop, Oh my gosh, that's going to be the biggest mess. You're going to have to recreate everything, put it on a Google folder. And then heaven forbid your computer crashes, you buy a new computer, you open up the Google doc and it's all still there for you. Okay. Another thing, if you've got a whole bunch of odds and ends everywhere, a little bit of product here, a little bit of product there, guess what? You need to get rid of it. And you just don't throw it away. You can do grab boxes. That's one of the best things that we did when I owned a company called pick your plum. We had odds and ends. Our inventory count was off or we had samples come in and I didn't need them and I didn't know what to do with them. And so what we did is every, we started off with every six weeks, we would put random things in a box that were still, I mean, they were fabulous, fabulous products, but there was like 10 left. And I didn't want to create a whole listing on 10 products. And so we would do these amazing grab boxes. We'd put them up online and we would sell out in a matter of minutes. We actually created a tradition around Thanksgiving time and said, while um, the men in your life go off and play flag football, why don't you stay in and go shopping? <laughs> and we, I remember one Thanksgiving, we sold over $17,000 of grab box stuff in under five minutes. Talk about creating cash flow in your business and getting rid, rid of the odds and ends. Now, with grab boxes, just a little asterisk right here, don't put crap in them. They've got to be really, really good things because you want to keep doing this so that you can get rid of everything. And then it left shelf space. It got cash in our bank account and our customers were super happy doing unboxings and spreading the word about our company. Okay. Now as you're cleaning and organizing, do you have multiple Shopify stores, multiple funnels? Mm, raise your hand. I know it's tempting to collect them all like your kid collects Lego kits. I know, I know it's bad. Okay. So one point uh, in my journey, I had a pillows store. I had a towels store. I had a blanket store and I had a fabric store Four stores. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to figure out how to manage everything, grow all the things. And you know what? I had way too many peaches on that branch. And so what I decided to do is I combined them all. We took out 
all of the fluffy stuff, combined it into one. And guess what? We grew and we had more profit in our business by doing that because I was focused on that one thing, that one business, that one peach. (laughs) And we were able to sell it. And so I believe that was our juicy fruit that we got from that strategy of cleaning and organizing our websites. Okay. Then here's the third thing right here. Stop being omnipresent. Now, if you've never heard of that word before, that means be everywhere. Emails, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Instagram stories, uh, Facebook, Facebook stories, YouTube, Pinterest. And I'll tell you what, you'll get exhausted. You will have the longest branch of peaches and there are going to be tiny, tiny, tiny peaches that are never going to amount to anything. The people that are omnipresent have teams. And until you have a team, I want you to choose one or two platforms if that's it. And I want you to go deep on those and not worry about the other things. So you can quit getting on YouTube and figuring out how to run a TikTok account because that's not your main thing, right? Maybe your thing is Instagram and emails. Those are your two things. Dive down in there, get those systems built up have a team come in or a person come in or hire someone to keep running those. And then sure you can go to TikTok next or wherever you want to go. But when you're starting, one thing that will absolutely kill you is trying to be omnipresent on all the channels. You don't have to do that. I give you permission to knock it off. (laughs) I give you permission to sleep instead or to go out for a walk or to dig deep into your email. I'm always going to be preaching, saying, encouraging Allison yelling at you to build your email list first, and then you can start building the other things. All right. So those are the three things that will help you dramatically increase the sales in your business. Number one, I want you to start pruning, looking at your numbers. What is working? What is not working? Put the things that are not working away and focus on the things that are working. Number two, clean, organize your computer, your businesses, your websites, organize them, put them into Google Docs, combine businesses if you need to. And then the third thing is stop with the omnipresent until you have a team. Stay simple. Life's complex. Our brains can take an Instagram post and make it so incredibly complex that it freezes us and doesn't even let us post. We have to keep things simple so that we can move forward in our business. That's just the way that it works. Simplicity grows. Simplicity scales. I've seen it with my businesses. I've seen it with other people's businesses. And I want to see it with your business. Prune that tree. Let's get you some big, juicy peaches at the end of your season. All right. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Thanks for uh, hanging out with me on today's podcast episode. All right. Oh, and guess what? Coming up, we've got episode number 100. What? 100 episodes. I'm in the triple digits now. This is so amazing. (laughs) I love it. I'm so grateful that you listen. I'm so grateful that we're bringing in these amazing guests to tell their stories, to help encourage you, give you the information and help you start implementing so that you can grow your business. So get out there, make that money, put it in your pocket. Why? Because you can. All right. I'll talk to you next week. Bye.